old good old Tex. You know, good old Tex Ricard. You know, they call him the pioneer of the 1920s that in push the boxing promotion game to the next level by getting it to go on radio and getting it out to the vast majority of the public. For that, Tex Ricard, yeah, I would say he's an innovative guy for that reason only. Uh, Tex Ricard, um, a lot of people don't know, you know the New York Rangers, they were named after them. They were the Tex Rangers back when he decided to get into the National Hockey League. Well, mysteriously, they won the NHL title in their second year. Hmm. Some suspected foul play, knowing that he was great friends of Maya Lansky. And during the prohibitionary period, illegal bootlegging of liquor, a gambler, and a known racist. That's what you're not going to read about him. So, in case you want to go to Wikipedia and see what they're going to find out and dig up, it's not going to happen. They're not going to tell you about this guy's pursuit to keep Jack Johnson out of boxing. He didn't want Jack Johnson boxing, period. Only in the what he called the color league, or the Negro league. Never against whites. He was completely against it. He the one who injected and pushed for the Man Act to go against Jack Johnson so that they can strip the title from him or make him defend. But as long as Jack Johnson was heavyweight champion, he was not going to promote any fights and he wasn't going to do any business in the United States. So he took all his business over to South America because he didn't want to promote in a country that would allow a black heavyweight champion. Once Jess Willard criminally won against Jack Johnson in 1915, oh, here comes Tex back into the picture. Oh, he mysteriously comes back. And now he's moving his business up to New York with Madison Square Garden. But let's go back to the beginning okay this guy used to do business with not just Wyatt Earp you know that's where he got popular at. when he went to Alaska that's when he used to own all these the bars where they saloons back then and he was a you know degenerate gambler a poker dealer and he worked as a bartender always at an illegal gambling hall and then he ran into Wilson Meisner now Wilson, Wilson Meisner now go now you can Wikipedia him that guy is a screenwriter script writer see this is where the innovation comes in at and they didn't even know it at that time they were staging all fake fights all the fights they were putting on from that point on when he was working with Meisner were all staged, all fixed, and all of the fights that they were putting on were scripted. They had storylines. That's where the change and the innovation came in. At these idiots didn't even see it. Wilson Meisner was scripting how the fights are gonna go. This guy wanted to steal this guy's lady. This guy stole my mouthpiece, my trainer, he shoved them at the press conference. They scripted everything outside of the ring. Meisner would do that to get people more interested and riled up and more build up for the fights. Then after that money slowed down and they were all in Alaska during the gold strike rush. So everything slowing down and all of this and that but when it was over after the gold rush that's when Ricard went back to Nevada and started promoting while Meisner was still doing his thing so they worked together briefly for that but that's where the gold is found at because that's the system we use today all the Floyd Mayweather he's jealous of Oscar De La Hoya's fame and he was in the background 
uh, Floyd Mayweather stole Oscar De La Hoya's training gear. You know, all of these sub stories you see that they create, that means absolutely nothing. It had nothing to do with the two guys fighting each other. But these are the scripts that they write out and they put in there just so it draws tension and interest into the fight. Then you have people running around saying it in the streets because that's what they hear. So they believe it. It's all build up. And we use that formula to this day. We're using the formula to this day. And that's where I think the innovation was with Tex. But they cared more about what he did with Jack Dempsey and Jack Kearns. And they all became promoters together and went into business where they put Jack Dempsey in with all these guys that arguably he could be but it was probably the best partnership you've ever seen because you at that time they never seen a manager a promoter and a fighter go in promotion together and then they grossed about nine million dollars during the 1920s where they call it the golden age of professional boxing okay when it was probably the most fixed fights in the history of mankind and the million dollar fight in 1921 with Dipster and, and Carpier and that was the first live radio broadcast then that brought up on you know Vince McMahon's grandfather Jess McMahon who was a boxing promoter too for all you WWE guys that came as boxing and then professional wrestling okay there was CWC the Capital Wrestling Corporation but Ricard hated wrestling he hated it to the core because all it was was about theatrics and then the, the actual matches itself he just couldn't stand them and it was like a, what boxing wasn't <laughs> it was like the build up to this crap here we got so other than that Vincent Mc, I mean Jess McMahon they went and promoted only the boxing side only but pretty soon he was gonna leave and do his own thing he just loved the way Jess McMahon would create stories the same way he did when he was working with Meisner and he wanted to use that for his fighting for the boxing only didn't want to come in as a promoter for the um, WWE or whatever the hell it was called back then so just so you can know some boxing history this is a guy Ricard Tex well nobody really called him Tex early on he was known as Dink then, he, then they start calling him Tex he got his Texas oil company cattle company he opened uh, Boston Garden which is called the Boston Madison Square Garden which is now known as Boston Garden the Rangers is named after this guy so he's gonna be here forever as the guy who pioneered all of these things that you see before you now but he was a racist so let that be known people gonna say oh well he was from a different time I don't care what time it was but at that time to the day he died he was a flat out racist. So, there you go.